finally got over my laziness and dragged out the table saw. I got it out of the little shed, which I guess it must have been more than a year now since I built that. And uh, despite the fact that reading the instructions gave me low expectations, it stood through sun and wind and rain and it's never leaked a drop, it hasn't deformed. Turned out to be a good little shed, you know. And uh, so anyway, I moved out the oversized lawnmower, riding lawnmower that I should have never bought. I'm going to have to try and figure out how to trade that for something good. Because it's, it's just too big for my yard. It's not even on the, you know, it's, I haven't finished the second tank, tank of gasoline in it yet. Oh well. Anyway, today I've got this piece of plywood. It was leaning against the wall in the garage. and The boss lady told me she didn't like that in her way. And so every time she goes out to get in the truck, I can imagine she's looking at me with that accusing look like, yeah, you hadn't got out of my way yet. Well, today we're going to make something out of it. And uh, hopefully it'll be a, uh, a, a shelter for uh, doing uh, powder coating. And it should be completely able to disassemble it and leave it in a little tiny pile in between uses because I know that I'm not going to powder coat something every day you know like maybe every year or so so anyway that's today's plan cut up that piece of wood tape measure couldn't believe it was two feet oh well <clears throat> So, I know, he's just cutting it into squares, but i got to make all the sides. Uh, I'm going to ease you out of the picture for a few minutes. Alright, now I cut down that 2 by 4 and that should take care of the uh, top and bottom of the back.
once they're squared off they ought to be about two foot. I'm going to put you guys to sleep again. This is from uh, my collection of estate sale screws. I've got a great big huge uh, deal full of them, but this was just what was in one drawer. And the most of them are way too long for the job here, but anyway, they're, you know, I'm going to use them as if they were the right size. Alright, this is going to be the back of it. And, uh, That's the way the plywood is going to fit against it all the way around. But uh, <clears throat> the sides and the top part are not going to be uh, framed out with a piece of wood like that. They're just going to go on there and stick together. You know, with, I may put in a pin or I may put in a screw. We'll figure that out before we get there. Now it's going to fit together something like that. The little square frame in the front that's going to be the front of it and uh, so all I need to do now is make the two sides and the bottom and decide how I'm going to fasten them together good chance that I'll just uh, put a screw into them and, and hold them like that and then when I'm going to take them apart run the short screws back out but that's the progress so far and I got some place I gotta go about four o'clock, so I've got a half hour to make some more progress here. So you guys won't be seeing a lot of it. I'll do it off camera. Well, my errand to metal supermarket is over and I'm back and got to go ahead and finish putting all the pieces together. So it's amazing how we human beings get used to working off of a table. It sure makes things easier when you do. So if you haven't got one, well, then you got to work off of whatever you got. That's obviously too small. Ha! Huh. You think I'd have noticed that? doesn't fit at all. <laughs> all right. All right, we're back in business again now. Well, be a lot nicer on the table. But I put the table saw back in the shed. that one is rounded off. I'll be back. I guess problems like that's why you bought a little socket sets. I can still get the screws in. I have to get some new little drivers though. as much fun as it could be. I'm going to suffer silently for a while then I'll show you what happened. Right now it's all just sort of leaning on itself but I have to uh, get in a situation where I can drill holes and drop some pins in to hold it together. I think I'll just drill holes and drop 16 penny nails in the holes to hold it together. If, uh, if I can get it square enough and close enough together, I think that'll work out. But I've got to get it close enough together and square enough first. So I'm going to work on this a few minutes and then 
then I'll let you guys have a look at it if there's something to see. Okay, so my painting enclosure has gotten this far. It's held together by nails put in on an angle. I put them in further, but my drill bit didn't let me do that. That's, that's as far as they would go. So there they are. And like any good paint enclosure, I've labeled it even. Now I've got to put a, a hanger right in the middle of it to hang things on so that I can powder coat them. Hang on. Okay, I stuck a, uh, a metal digus through the top for uh, hooking the one of the electrical leads to. The other one goes to your spray gun. And we'll go now and look down inside to see what it looks like. Of course, this part has to be handheld. And there it is, hanging down. I can rotate it from below, I mean from above. And it'll carry electricity downwards. And we have a paint booth that I can take apart and stack in a neat little pile against the wall somewhere. So, I'll leave it up to you guys, the viewers, to decide did I make a acceptable, portable, disassembled paint booth, or did I make a pile of crap, you know? <laughs> I wonder how that boat's going to go. Anyway, there you are. Let's get on to another subject over here. Because I'm a cheapskate, my giveaways tend to be pretty cheap, <laughs> but here is a seven-function digital multimeter and if you don't have one and don't know how to use one this is your perfect chance to find out for free I'll put a little uh, set of words down there that'll give you the start date and the end date of the giveaway you just put in your name that you want it, and if more than one person wants it I'll put your names in a hat or something and we'll draw one okay so if you don't know how to use one of these, you really need to. You need to get it. Look on YouTube. Somebody there will show you how to use it. And it will enrich your life greatly. Okay? Now then, from here, we'll probably go and see if Bubba's doing something or if Daisy's doing something. Or who knows. Now, that's the stuff from Metal Supermarket that I had to interrupt in the middle of the day to go get. The, uh... The shiny stuff is aluminum. It's so cheap as to be, you know, not worry about it. The other stuff is 12L14. The one inch stuff is about $16 a foot. The inch and a quarter stuff is about $23 a foot. And the inch and a half stuff is about the same price. So, there you are. That ought to last me all year, and then some. I got a complaint from Minnesota that I was neglecting Oli and, and Lena and Sven. And, you know, so today we're visiting with uh, Oli and Sven, and they, they go on fishing down on the, on the river there. It's on the ice, you know, they're ice fishing. So they got their hole cut in the ice, and they got their pole set up and everything. And, Oli reaches in his pack, pack and he pulls out a thermos and sets it out there on the ice beside him. Sven says, what you got there, Oli? And Oli says, I got a thermos. And Sven says, well, what does it do? And Oli says, well, he says, it keeps the cold things cold and the hot things hot. And so they fish a little bit and Sven says, well, Oli, he says, uh, what you got in that thermos? And Oli says, well, he says, I got a popsicle and two cups of coffee. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.